ain't drunk. I'm just drinking. But you're so high. Oh man, you know I ain't high. But you're so high. Yeah, well I just take a little sip every now and then. But you're so high. You ought to be ashamed Stay of yourself. Drunk all oh the come night. on now, you all don't feel like that. Bam! Hey kids, I am back. Check it out. Yoda has been retired. We've got the Patriot Blades mat. Woohoo! Very cool. It's the cleanest you're ever going to see it, by the way. So, anyway. Woo! Smells like it's burning in here. Um, so, as you just saw, we are going to build the Bench Buddy. Or the Tester, or whatever you want to call it. So, here's what we're going to need. We're going to need... I'm going to have to cut this and do this, because I'm not prepared at all. But... I have been looking, I shouldn't say that, let me, let me preface this by saying I have a drawer full of shit that I have been needing to test for about a year. <laughs> you know, VTXs, receivers, flight controllers, cameras, blah, 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 blah. Um, everywhere I look, there's something I need to test. And I, it basically comes down to, I'm too fucking lazy to sit there and wire stuff up, test it, you know, put it or put it into a different quad, whatever else. So I'm going to build a test board. Uh, and one that you can afford. We're going to use it all out of, make it out of mostly used parts. Now, the beauty of this is you can make this as cheap or, you know, I'm sorry, not cheap. Yeah, it's cheap, but I'll put links in the description for the stuff that I use. But it's very cheap to make, but you can make it with stuff you have laying around. So that's what we're going to do. I've already labeled this side 12 volts, 5 volts, and VC. We'll get into that later. Um, let me go ahead and get all this stuff together, and I'll show you what we're going to need. Bam, bear back. All right. The cool thing about this is you can make this as extravagant or as simple as you want, right? So what we're going to do is, is this is going to be basically a testing board. So I'm going to take a power distribution board I have that's laying around. I'm going to take a flight controller that's seen better days. It actually has a blown ESC, so we're going to use that. An old camera, sure. I'm going to use a bunch of these voltage output meters to put here, here, and here so we can see what all those are doing. And uh, basically the only thing that limits you on this is your imagination. So. You can put on ESCs, you can put on all sorts of stuff, and you'll see what I'm getting at. A breadboard, which is what this is, as you see here, is basically what we called in the music industry, and I used to build these a lot for music, uh, a patch bay. Uh, you've seen old-time telephone operators, you know, plugging cords into things, whatever, that's basically all this is. And you're going to see how I'm going to do this. So get grab whatever components you want. We're going to use some two-pole, and like I said, there's going to be links in the description to all the stuff that I got. Some two-pole uh, terminals, which we call these Phoenix, blo Phoenix blocks in the robotics industry anyway. Some wire... Um, I got some small alligator clips. I think the whole thing without the, these bits was like 50 bucks. Uh, you can make this extremely simple. Hell, you can use a power distribution board and just solder shit to it. You'll see as we go along what this is going to do. So the first thing we need to do, and there's going to be lots more bits into this that I'm not even mentioning as I go, because I'm kind of winging it about how I want to do it. So this breadboard is very basic, okay? So you have a power rail, a power rail, power rail, power rail, power rail, and we can, and these are all congruent lines too. So what we're going to do is we have to figure out what kind of power leads we want going in, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an XT60 and I'm going to put it here, and I'm going to take it, where the fuck did it go? I have an XT30, there it is, XT30, and that's going to go over here, and then we're going to bridge a couple of these over here. So we're going to use some hot glue too. As you see, um, as you will see, I'm going to use this as my VC or my voltage in power rail. All right. So you see, you got the positive across the top, the negative across the bottom. These two pin Phoenix blocks. All right. These are terminals. So if we use a Phillips screwdriver, okay, we can tighten these terminals up, but they take up three spots. No big deal. So what we're going to do. So I can't put them this way. That would have been nice. But I'm going to put a positive here. And then we're going to put a negative. Let's make sure we're in the right spot. Don't want to fuck that up. And then we're going to put a negative down here. And we're going to put a positive up here. And a negative down here. 
okay? But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these banana plug terminals here, and we're gonna wire in our XT30 and XT60 into there. And then we're also going to bridge a couple of those wires, positive and negative here, going this way, and uh, that one's positive, sorry, and negative going this way. So we're gonna have positive, negative, and that's gonna power the board, and these are gonna be our outputs to what we want. This will all come together in a minute. So this is not a soldering tutorial, <laughs> so, and I wanna make this as quick and painless as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna hot glue these in so they stay put a little bit better because they don't stay in as well as I'd like. And uh, this isn't gotta be pretty, it's just gotta be functional, okay? And then I'm going to take basically our XT60 in here, our XT30 in here. Then we're gonna take some 20 out wire and then we're gonna go into here and into here. So I'm gonna do that, I'll be right back. All right, here's what we've done. So I brought in the XT30 and the XT60, pretty basic. XT30, negative, positive. XT60, negative, positive. And then I bring both positives into the top block, both negatives into the negative block, and that is going to supply voltage to this top bar, which is our VCN. I've already managed to make a big fucking mess of my new map. All good. So, um, yeah, the next thing we're going to do is you see these little, these Arduino pins, we call them, or breadboard pins, okay? Mail to mail, these are the patch cables that go into everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take a few of these and I'm gonna cut them. I'm gonna wipe this off, okay? And I'm going to double-sided tape, bam, this stuff. I'm gonna double side tape a voltmeter here, a voltmeter here, and a voltmeter here. But for right now, we'll just do this top one. Um, I will not be plugging in an XT60 and, excuse me, an XT30 at the same time. Um, I just did this because sometimes I run 2S micro stuff and then everything else, or 3 or 4S micro stuff, whatever. So that's that. So, but I wanna be able to detect my AC in or my VC in, which is my full voltage, my five voltage and my 12 volts off of these. So these are very basic. They're like a buck a pop, buck 10 or something like that. I bought a bag full of the fuckers. So outside's negative. I'm gonna unsolder these and then I'm just gonna cut a few of these and then we're going to solder them on. So I'm gonna do that three times and get it all all readied up. So bam, be right back. All right, bam, so here we go. We've got our little meter right here. There's a little piece of clear schmutz over there I gotta peel off. I did hot glue the banana plugs or the pins in because this is a permanent thing. So I plug in my battery, bam. And I don't know if you can see that okay, 11.3. So I'm gonna do the same thing for each side. So this is the power band for this side. This is gonna be the power band for this side. Um, what you can do, you don't necessarily have to use the pins for these. You can just put a little bit of solder on the ends, stick them in, and get the same effect. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, and I'm going to do one for the 5 volt, and I'm going to do one for the 12 volt. So we will be right back with that. All right, and we're back. So what we did, we put a little meter on each side, each power panel. So this one's going to be our power in. This is gonna be our five volts, I marked it there. This is gonna be our 12 volts. So now next thing we're gonna do, like I said, you don't have to make it this elaborate. I'm just doing this because I have a ton of testing stuff that I'm gonna be doing. So uh, I've just got buckets of shit I need to fix. So you can, like I said, you can make this as elaborate or non-elaborate as you want. So I'm gonna take a power distribution board and I'm gonna stick it there. And I'm gonna take this ESC. This is a old Cicada uh, flight controller that everything is good on it except one ESC is fried. So I'm gonna use that because I can test cameras, VTX, OSDs, all that good stuff. And uh, I can test everything on this. Uh, receivers, the whole nine yards, and I'm gonna put one of those there. Um, I don't know what the best way is. Find the best way of orientation. I don't wanna block a bunch of stuff. So I'll probably just use this like that. Just put them like this, no big deal. And I'm just gonna use double-sided tape and stick these down. I'm also gonna put on a little camera 
This is just a cheapo friggin' CCD 1000 Eashim TVL. Nothing fancy. I'm just going to double side tape it to here just so I've got a working camera on there as well. And I'm going to dig out a VTX and do the same thing. Then what we're going to do is I'm going to take some of these jumpers that we've got and I'm going to solder them to the power side, the 5 volt side, the 12 volt side, um, and a bunch of other things. I'm going to do that first and then I'll come back and I'll show you what I did. Be right back. All right, so here's what we have done. It is 95% finished, okay? I'm gonna zoom in. Hopefully I can get some of this in shot. Yeah, go out a little bit. There we go, okay. So what we've got, oh shit. <coughs> Excuse me, all right, I'm not gonna edit that out. So I added a couple more of these double terminals, two to the 12 volt side and two to the five volt side. These are just if for some reason we want to get some ancillary voltage. So these two are negative, these two are positive, and these are hot glued in just like we did with the bar up here. <laughs> then what I did was I took two wires, of, you know, these jumpers, and I cut them. And I put solder on one side and leave the pin on the other. On these, I do cut the pins down a little bit so they're like that. It gives you a little bit better of a seat, okay? So I put two into the power lead, positive and negative. So a top bar is positive, bottom bar is negative. And I did the same thing with the flight controller. These are mounted, everything on here is mounted with double-sided tape. Okay, see, woo uh, for vibration, ha <laughs> no. But so positive and negative, and this guy I ran these two positive and negative all the way up under these boards. I put this little pin in here just to kind of keep it neat. Uh, there's nothing going to that, it's just holding the wires in. And it goes up and it plugs into here as well. And then we've also got our meter plugged in. Then we've also got all of these free. And not to mention all of these. So we have tons of power there. Then I wired two into the video in and video out. My video in is yellow. This bar, even though it says this terminal says positive and negative on it going down the center here, this is a dead. It, this is dead. This is dead. This is dead. This is dead. These are all dead. Okay. So... Basically, I ran my video in to this side, my video out to this side. Now remember that, okay? Then I took my camera and I soldered three wires into the back, or you can splice them if it's easier, and two of those go to the five volt terminal, which is over here, that's always gonna be powering this camera, and the other one, which is our video, which would be video in, I'm plugging right into this bar. See, that connects it with the video in right here because all these have continuity and all these have continuity. Then I took a five volt cheapy little 25 milliwatt VTX and I plugged that into the five volt rail because that's also a five volt power. And I permanently, some of these I hot glued in like these up here and these here um, because I'm never gonna take them out. I hot glued the positive side of the VTX in, but I did not with the negative, because you don't always want that going, and if it's just sitting there for too long, it can burn up. But anyway, there's my five volts there, and then I took my, what would be video out, right? Uh, your video out from your receiver, your flight controller to your camera. I just plugged it into the second rail. So my video out is right here, and I plug it into this rail. Anything you plug into here is gonna be video out. Anything you plug into here is gonna be video in. So, that's how that's working. Um, we got the five volts going over to here from the power distribution board, powering this whole line. 12 volts coming over here, powering this whole line. Um, and that's it for that. And we got the camera built in. So how this is working, if I plug this in right now, see if it smokes. <laughs> it won't. We're just going to take a 3S. Look at that. Bam. Beautiful. Okay. So you can see there it says 4.8 volts, which is 5 volts, 10 volts on this side, which, yeah, 12 volts, 10 volts, and 11.3 on our main bus coming in. Okay. Everything's powered up. So if I turn on my, this is just a little thing I keep on the bench here for testing video, we should get transmission. And there it is. So you can see, woohoo, there's my fingers. So this is working. 
Very, very cool. So we can pretty much test anything. The next thing I'm gonna do, so basically, if you've got a camera, the next thing to really make this thing useful is we're gonna take our alligator clips that we got, bam, and we're going to make a bunch of alligator clippable jumpers, okay? The reason we're gonna do that is if you have a camera or a VTX or whatever else, the whole point of this board is you don't want to be soldering, yeah, shit, soldering this shit constantly and unsoldering. That was the whole point because I get lazy and I don't like doing that. So what we're going to do, you could screw the power into the terminals. You could do it that way. But I'm going to make a bunch of jumpers with these alligator clips. We're just going to solder them right on there. Very easy to do. And then one side is going to be pinned. And these are, yeah, let's do that later. Um, and then you'll be able to basically, okay, five volts, pin, pin, and then you could take this, and it, let's just pretend this is a camera wire or something. You go positive on that, negative on that, boom, you've got power. Do the same thing with the signal lead, boom, plug it into video in right here, and you'll be able to see if it, that camera's working or the VTX is working. I'm also going to, all of these, you can see how these boards, for those of you that don't know, how breadboards are laid out, uh, let's see if I can zoom in here. Okay. You got A, B, C, D, E, F, excuse me, G, blah, 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 blah. These have all have continuity. So A is all continuity. B is all continuity. All right. So if you take your meter, boom, put it on continuity test, you should get on A side, anywhere you plug into A should be hot. Wait a minute. Oh, it's going across. I'm sorry. Yep, going across on these. My bad. Okay. So on the pot, these we've got going straight across. These are A, B, C, D, E. See that? These have continuity. and But this rail to this rail does not. Does that make sense? Okay. So the positive and negatives, all the positives are continuity. All the negatives are continuity. And the rail is going this way. A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. So all the way across, if I'm not mistaken. Nope, just those bands. My bad. Okay. So you've got a lot, lot, lot more terminals than you would ever need. Okay. The reason I went with such a big board, though, was because I wanted to be able to attach all of these components to this thing so I could just have a one-stop shop solution for testing all this crap out. So like for my receiver, I'm going to take probably A, B, C, D and plug that in here. And then, then we would take alligator clips, connect it to our receiver, and then go into the other side. So there's three there, 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 okay? So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna whip up a bunch of these because uh, I wanna be able to test receivers on here because I have a bunch of fucking receivers that are trash. I've got uh, cameras that are brand new that didn't work, so I wanna test those. We've got our little voltage meters. You know, like, like I said, you can make this as complicated or easy as you want. Um, theoretically, if I have a receiver on here, I could technically wire up a motor and test it. Okay, one thing I'm going to add right here later on is a servo tester. So I don't even have to piss around with a radio. I'm going to put a servo tester right here and be able to wire it right into an ESC and give it power. So I'm going to whip up a couple of these little jumpers and uh, just so you can see what they're like. And I will uh, keep you posted. I'll be right back. All right, and we're back. So it looks kind of complicated, but it's really not. What I did is I took a bunch of the jumpers and I soldered them to alligator clips. So now we've got, we can plug this jumper into any pin we want, bam. And we can connect this to, let's see, let's find some. Uh, we can see if this PDB is worth a shit, right? Um, and we can test the voltage, we can do whatever we want. So I made a bunch of those jumpers. The other thing I did too, and I'm probably gonna take my label maker and label some bits and bobs like, okay, this one's my S bus, right? Into this row right here. So what I can do is I can take a receiver, plug it into five volts, put the S bus, put a jumper from here into S bus, put this on the S bus side of the receiver, and then see if it's working. I can plug it into the computer, 
right here into our USB, whatever we want to do. So you don't have to solder anything. So that works out pretty cool. The other thing that I did as well is I took, since I put these Phoenix block terminals in here, I put a dedicated voltage. Um, I use a little bit thicker wires, which really makes absolutely zero difference. And the other thing that I did with this, if I can get it, is I took a bunch of these pins that are on these, because you got zillions of them, and I hot glued them in as posts just to hold these because these are always going to be hot. These are always going to have hot voltage. I mean, and it kind of keeps it on the board. These things get really slick and pain in the ass to open up. But anyway, so I got one for our incoming power. I've got one for 12 volts as well. So just for shits and grins, if you want to take this off, okay, plug it into, let's see if this power distribution board blows up, okay? These things are too slick. I got to put some fucking sand or something in there. <laughs> All right, positive and negative. Now we just plug our lipo in. Look at that. Ah, cool. So everything works. So that's just one thing you can do, obviously. And you can, I'm not even done with this. You can do basically anything that you want to do, anything that you can think of to do. Um, you can test, mo you make a motor tester out of it. You can do uh, ESCs. I could take a, I mean, that's, that's easy enough to do too. ESC right here. And then uh, if you had a normal receiver with motor outputs, or like I said, I'm going to put a servo tester on there, bam. You can make a beeper tester. You can do, I can take um, some more of these meters and put them on here and put alligator clips coming out. And I can test uh, the voltage. You know, I already have a, a fluke, so I'm not going to worry about that. Man, these things are annoying. I'll put some tape around them or something. Um, very hard to open. They're slick. Uh, so yeah, as far as you want to go with it, or as simple as you want. It doesn't even have to be this complicated. This is not pretty, but it works, right? I can, basically my biggest testing that I do is cameras, VTXs, and receivers. Those are my biggest things. Once in a blue moon, I will do a flight controller. You know, usually you kind of know when that's gonna go out. But like I said, I will probably label uh, the wires so I remember what the fuck's going on, but it's not exactly hard to track down either, you know. So uh, the other thing you could do too that would be kind of cool is you could mount some hot glue, some alligator clips, good ones, not this shit, some little bigger ones like these. Yeah, check that shit out. Take that off. And you could like mount it right there as like a little holder for boards or whatever you want to do. So, you know, you could Geek it up. That's what it's there for. So anyway, hope you guys build this. This is kind of cool. It's cheap to do. If you got a bunch of parts laying around that like this FC is great. It works fine, but the ESC is blown out on one side. So it's pretty much fucking useless, but I can use it as a motor tester. I can use it as OSD, um, video in, video out, branching off to everything. Bam. So it's not really that hard to do. It's very cheap to do. And it's a whole lot easier than soldering, unsoldering, soldering, and unsoldering tons of shit all the fucking time. So if you have any questions, let me know. I'll put a link in the description to most of this stuff. And, uh, you know, as far as the building things go and, uh, keep shining side up. Bam. Bye. Bam, JJ. Hope you like fishing. Bam, JJ! Bam, JJ! Don't feel like fishing!